This tutorial is part of a YouTube course playlist and a Udemy course. You can access the first phases of this course on YouTube or the whole course at Udemy. Links to both can be found in the video description. I think we have already established that this project, like many other fast API projects, will require a database. So we have already set up our database in Docker, so it is running. So we now need a way of actually connecting our project, our fast API project, to the Docker database. I say the Docker database, I mean the Postgres database that is running in a Docker container. Right, so let's go back into our project. I just, uh, yeah, but okay, so let's go back into the project. Let's think about now what we're going to do. So here in the app, I mentioned previously that we're going to be utilizing this folder, everything related to the application we are building in terms of the code required to run the application, uh, the functionality of the application even, is going to be residing in this folder. Now you can call it whatever you like. I've just called it app just to be generic. I could have called it inventory. That's probably maybe a better name, but there aren't going to be any other applications that we are building. So there's only going to be one app here. So that's absolutely fine. So let's uh, create a new file in here. I'm going to call this, now this could be called uh, connect DB, DB connection. Um, you, you might want to call this something relevant and that you think is more relevant. I'm going to call this uh, just database for now. Dot pi. I'm going to completely U-turn and I'm going to call this DB connect connection. That sounds a little bit more descriptive, doesn't it? Database connection. Right. Rather than it being a database, suggesting it, there is a database in this file. So database connection. Okay, so we're going to we're going to be utilizing the environment variables. So we are going to need to interact with them. And we're going to do that through the OS module. So the OS module does provide a functionality for interacting with the operating system. It is commonly used here uh, to access environment variables. That's exactly what we're going to be utilizing it for. Right, so next up, we're going to need some different resources. So from SQL Alchemy, which we haven't installed yet. That's a good point. Uh, let's go ahead and actually install that. That's why it's not coming up. So pip install, really simple, SQL, SQL Alchemy. Nothing needed there other than that. Pip install SQL Alchemy. Have I spelled that wrong? Have I? Oh, there we go. SQL Alchemy. Okay, so we'll go ahead and install SQL Alchemy. That should now be installed. Don't forget, once you install something, to pip, uh, pip freeze uh, the requirements. Now, oh, looks like we're not in the root directory anymore. That's uh, good to remember. So I'm just going to CD back out. Just make sure in the root directory. Uh, so Docker, oh no, what am I doing? Docker, I'm completely out of sync now. Uh, so pip freeze. That's what we're going to do. We're going to update the requirements file. There we go. So we should now have in the requirements file, we should have SQL Alchemy. There we go. So we should now be able to, from SQL Alchemy, let's go ahead and import the create engine. I'll explain what that is shortly. And then from uh, SQL Alchemy .orm, let's go ahead and import something called uh, the declarative base. And also we're going to need potentially the session maker. Now, remember what I mentioned previously in our VS Code setup, we set the edit uh, format and save true. And we also set, sorry, the source fix all explicit. So when we press save, it will try and fix all mistakes. So you just need to be careful here not to press save because that will get removed because we're not currently using it. Oh, we've just imported it in at the moment. We're not actually utilizing these resources that we're bringing in yet. So be careful of that. Right, so. Let's talk a little bit, first of all, about the engine. Now, unsurprisingly, the create engine here is utilized to actually create a database engine. This represents the interface to the database. Now, like I mentioned, this is used to create a connection, if you like, to the database. It is one of the most fundamental functions in SQL Alchemy and is typically always the first step when working with a database in Python applications. Now this create engine accepts a single argument, which is the URL 
that specifies the connection parameters for the database. So we need to pass in the parameters related to the connection that we want to build. So I made that sound really complicated. Maybe I should have said we need to create the settings needed to actually connect to the database and we need to pass that into the create engine. Now, what we're going to need to do is actually build a database URL. So let's call this dev database because we're going to set this up in our environment variable. So dev database, uh, let's go for URL. Okay, so that then is going to equal. So we're going to use the OS module to access the environment variables. So we're going to say get EMV, get environment variable, and then we need to just specify the environment variable we want to get, which is going to be the development uh, database. Now it can be URL, it could just be database, but I'm going to specify database and I press save there, notice, press save. Right, so we've set that up. Now we just need to pass that in to our engine. So let's say engine equals create, create engine, and then let's pass in the dev database URL. So now we have the instructions, we pass now the instructions to SQL Alchemy. So it knows how to actually connect to the database. Now, what we need to do now is create a session. So this session represents a connection to the database that encapsulates a series of related operations within a transaction. So sessions are used to manage interactions with the database. So when we start to query, inserting, updating and deleting data, we're going to need this session. We're going to need this to actually interact with the database. No surprises here how we're going to do this. We're going to use the session maker. All right, so let's go ahead and create a, a session, a local session. You can call it whatever you like. I've called it session local. Uh, let's call this a session maker. Okay, so we're going to use session maker. What's really handy here is if I hover over, it's giving me some information about different things that I can pass into this. So we have this auto flush. Um, we potentially can define uh, expire on commit info. So there's a whole bunch of things here that we can pass in. So what we're going to do is specify auto commit and auto flush. So first up, let's define auto commit and let's set that to false. So with the auto commit on or true, every time we perform an operation, insert, update, delete, and then run it, it will automatically be committed to the database. Now here we've set auto commit to false. Ultimately, what that means is that we will need to manually commit the operations that we're trying to perform on the database every time we want to perform an operation on the database. Now I would be recommending to set this to false because ultimately it's going to provide us more transaction control. So as we manage our transactions, we can do this explicitly. We know exactly when we're going to commit. And that, like I say, just gives us a little bit more flexibility to control the changes and when they're actually committed to the database. There might be additional uh, tasks we might want to perform before we actually commit to the database. So it provides us a little bit more control. It also then feeds into this idea of consistency because we are manually defining it. We can be assured exactly when it's going to be committed and we can then ensure or better uh, ensure the consistency of database operations. And it feeds into other areas. For example, it provides better rollback support when we want to, for example, roll back any changes we've made. Um, it can have performance. Uh, it can help performance in the long term because we again, we're controlling exactly what happens when. So overall, the disabling auto commit and SQL alchemy sessions does give us a little bit more control over transaction management, data consistency, sometimes error handling and performance. So next up is the auto flush. And we're going to set this to false. So let me just add this in first. So auto flush, we set that to, oh, we could set it to true, the default true. Okay. Now this is fairly tricky to explain auto flush in many ways. And it really isn't important at this point other than to actually just define it as true. But if I was trying to summarize this, I would say that a flush um, of pending changes in SQL Alchemy 
prepares and then synchronizes the changes made within a session with the underlying database tables. So this will ensure that subsequent database operations or queries within the same session or across different sessions sees the most up-to-date state of our data. So by setting auto flush true, whenever we actually were to create an insertion, update or deletion, the SQL statements are generated, SQL Alchemy executes them within a transaction context, but it doesn't actually get committed to the database until we actually actually run commit. So by doing that, by running this flush process or operation, we are able to make changes in the session and synchronize them with the database, but not actually permanently commit them. By doing that, this means that other database sessions or transactions can see these changes, but they are not finalized until obviously, like you mentioned, they are explicitly committed in the transaction. It is an important function to understand, but not right at this second. Should we come across it in the project, talk about performance, etc., we may delve a little bit deeper into both auto commit and auto flush. Now, finally, we set the bind option, uh, bind equals true. So what we're doing here is that, well, the bind parameter in the session maker function is used to associate the session with a specific database engine. So when bind is set to true, like we've just done here, it will mean that the session will be associated with the default database engine that we specified here in the create engine. So we're saying that this session is going to be utilized for this engine, for this connection that we're building. So this is absolutely fine for our database. We are going to be utilizing one database, but where you might turn this off or have a different setup here is when you might require multiple databases for your project. Or potentially where you have tenants or sharding. So here you wouldn't necessarily bind it to one single database like we're doing here. Now, ultimately, all the decisions here that we've made will be very much dependent upon your specific requirements and the architecture of your application. So the main thing here is that SQL Alchem provides great flexibility to accommodate this various uh, setup, various setups that you might have. Now, something we don't need to add here, but I will do is base equals declarative base. OK. The declarative base is a common pattern used to create a base class for model definitions. But we'll create some models shortly and we'll utilize this base and it will make a little bit more sense. But I'm going to add it here in the connection, although we don't necessarily need to. But we're just going to have a central location for this in case we create uh, different model definitions throughout our application. This is going to be one central place. So SQL Alchemy's declarative base will allow us to define a database model using Python classes. We'll see that shortly. Each model class typically inherits from a common base class. This is what we've got here. We've created that base class now. So that's going to provide the functionality for mapping Python objects to database tables. And we're just going to add that here. Like I said, um, it seems like a convenient place to put it. We don't need to. We could add it in our models, uh, but we're going to add that there and we can then import that in as and when we need it. So we're now going to create a function which is going to be utilized to actually create our session and use it within our application. So let's go ahead and create a new function here called, uh, let's call this get db session. So we can call this within our application to actually get the session and utilize it within our application. So we're going to say deep deb db equals uh, session local parentheses. And then we're going to say try. And then we're going to this time uh, yield the db. Uh, so that will then create or pass the database session over to our application. Um, and then once we've finished with it, we can then go ahead and close db.close. So this will help to make sure that our database resource is used and managed properly. Sessions were closed when they're no longer needed. And the use of yield will allow for efficient resource management and integration with asynchronous frameworks. Okay, so the final step is to build our actual URL for the database. So let's go ahead 
in the environment variables here, let's go ahead and add the dev, actually, what we called it, dev database URL. Before we use our URL and establish a connection to the database, we are going to need a, an adapter. So here we have the posts, and there are a few of them. We're going to be utilizing this uh, adapter. So this is a driver or adapter that enables Python applications to connect to a Postgres SQL database. It's going to provide the functionality to establish connections uh, and to run queries and retrieve data and all those type of operations. It really is a uh, something that we can't do without. So let's go ahead and pip install that within our project. There are a few different adapters you can use with utilizing this. It is very popular. So let's go ahead and pip install that. And then let's not forget to pip freeze. So just uh, go ahead and save that into our project requirements. Right, so why we did that first is because we can't establish a URL until we know what driver we're using. So here then to create our URL, we're going to specify first Postgres QL. So this is the database technology we're using. And then we specify the driver that we're using, which is PSY cop g2 okay so that's our driver and then we then need to specify the username and password so postgres and uh, that's going to need a, a a colon postgres so username and password and then we can go ahead and specify where to find the database so that's going to be in our case 127.0.0.1 and then we need the port number now here we're using five four think three three. Just double check the compose. So here we're using five four three three. So that's where we're sending this request to connect, or where that you're going to find the database. And then we can actually then specify the database that we're using, which is inventory. There we go. So there we have the URL connection string to connect to our database. So at this point, although we could add some code here and test it, we will make the assumption that everything is good to go and we'll test it in the next tutorial.